Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to do a brief introduction to uh, global level explanations, in particular about global level feature importance for models, as well as a quick introduction to some of the interpretable models that have been explored in literature. So when we talk about global level explanation and in context of uh, global level feature importance, one of the commonly used techniques is that of using permutations. So the importance of a feature is basically assessed uh, by increase in prediction error of the model after a permutation of the feature values is done, uh, which essentially breaks the relationship between the feature and the true outcome. The, a good uh, advantage of uh, using this method is that it is model agnostic and can be used with any uh, model, uh, uh, of course, uh, because it involves uh, just permuting the feature value uh, and uh, then uh, doing a scoring pass of the model uh, of choice. Another uh, technique which has been looked at in literature around global level feature importance is that of partial dependence plots. Uh, what it does is it basically shows the marginal effect of one or two features uh, on the predicted outcome of the model. So with that we'll move into uh, the, a list of techniques that uh, have been looked at literature uh, for building an interpretable model. Um, so this is in contrast to post hoc explanations which you have heard in previous video. Uh, where we have a black box model and uh, the quest is for developing techniques to explain individual predictions from those black box models. In contrast, what we are going to see is a set of techniques which gives explanation um, much more intrinsically and we do not have to design a separate set of techniques, uh, interpretability techniques for these models. So the first model that comes to everybody's mind on uh, is a decision tree. It's a highly interpretable model, especially if it's a short decision tree, then uh, one could basically pass through each of the path and uh, th that basically gives a set of uh, uh, a, a rule. Uh, like for example, if your age is less than 30, uh, but you eat a lot of pizzas, then you're probably unfit. And uh, it's, a, it's a very interpretable, very intuitive model. Uh, now, uh, the challenge with these models is, of course, that they are uh, they don't have a, a very high accuracy. For example, like uh, neural networks. So, what people have also explored is uh, the model called decision sets. So, the way they differ from a tree. Uh, so, what happens is that if you're looking at a decision tree, uh, a very small tree will have a very uh, poor accuracy and if you start increasing the depth of the tree, uh, there are two problems. One, it uh, gets a very high variance and but the problem from interpretability perspective is that it also becomes difficult to understand the prediction the paths keep going. So a decision set, what it does is it basically is, a, as you can see uh, from this example, uh, in context of disease diagnosis, it's essentially building uh, like a, uh, a rule uh, which is saying that if you have allergies and if you have a smoker and if you have irregular heartbeat, then probably it's uh, asthma. So uh, it's basically giving a set of uh, Boolean clauses uh, and then with each clause uh, you, you have an associated category of disease here. So there have been techniques uh, proposed for um, learning and extracting interpretable decision sets from training data sets. Uh, for example, this work by Lakaraju and uh, on finding interpretable decision sets. Uh, then this work from Tong Wang and others is basically exploring a Bayesian framework for learning interpretable decision sets. Now a problem uh, or a challenge with decision sets is that there is no notion of order uh, which sometimes is desirable especially if you want to look at more uh, if, if, the, if the number of items in a set is very large and you want to look at the top uh, first uh, for a quick glance. Uh, so think of like a doctor trying to use this kind of a classifier for making decisions um, and if there are thousands of uh, items in the decision set then they won't have a chance to look at all of them. You want notion of like a list. So 
to address that challenge uh, the, the notion of a decision list has also been introduced um, and it's basically like an if otherwise uh, you uh, if else if else if kind of a situation uh, so you look at the first clause then you move to the next one and then you basically end up in the default clause towards the end a very uh, similar uh, notion is called a falling rule list uh, so a falling rule list is an ordered uh, list of if then rules um, but with the added uh, constraint that estimated probability of success decreases monotonically down the list. Thus a falling rule list directly contains the decision making process and the more at risk observations are classified first. So this is something which is again even more practical. So this is uh, uh, in the slide you can see an example of a decision list uh, which is basically if the looking at mammographic mass data so if it's an irregular shape and age is greater than 60 then the risk is and then it tells you the probability of risk uh, and also the support value and as you can observe that the probability of risk is going down monotonically down the list so box drawings uh, are another set of interpretable uh, classification models which were introduced in context of rare classes so this is interesting because sometimes our data is such that the class of interest is extremely extremely rare and uh, one way to uh, uh, kind of ex explore classification for these uh, types of data sets is to build like regions of hotspots so it's basically like a um, uh, subspace in the feature space uh, uh, marked by like an axis parallel rectangle as you can see in the diagram uh, which basically contains way more examples of the class of interest than the majority class so uh, basically each box comes with its own precision and recall and uh, the uh, paper uh, on this is uh, um, basically shows how to extract such uh, box drawings uh, given a data set uh, but yeah this is more relevant and more useful in context of data sets where uh, the number of uh, instances for the class of interest is extremely extremely small so another very interesting uh, proposal was uh, using a sparse linear integer model uh, and this was developed for the application of medical systems. So uh, this is extremely uh, intuitive and this is how uh, I would say humans uh, uh, make decisions. So you have different clauses and with each clause there is a notion of a point and uh, uh, what the model does is it says okay if you satisfy a particular clause you get so many points and some sometimes you may also get uh, negative points and then finally there's notion of a score total score uh, based on what all clauses you satisfied and if the score exceeds a threshold then uh, then you say that uh, you are, you basically are the positive class otherwise uh, otherwise the instance belongs to the negative class so in context of medical systems this makes a lot of sense because doctors essentially would look at your symptoms and then with each symptom uh, uh, in their mind they're thinking of okay if this uh, symptom is there then you get so many points uh, but you know and and very soon if the number of symptoms that you show are the ones which correspond to very high number of points then uh, um, then you're probably sick with a, with a certain disease and and you need immediate care so this is yet another way of um, making the model a bit more expressive by giving them points uh, the authors basically constrain these points to integers uh, so that the uh, system remains interpretable So k nearest neighbors, uh, this is one of the classifiers that all of us are very very familiar with uh, and uh, having a notion of explanation uh, is quite intrinsic and natural for k nearest neighbor classifiers uh, in terms of influential points. Uh, so instead of explaining it in context of uh, features, uh, in k nearest neighbors the classification is a direct function of the class labels of the near points so one can basically explain the prediction of a KNN classifier by uh, essentially telling which data points were close to it 
and what the uh, what their individual class labels was finally uh, there is the notion of uh, uh, generalized additive model so what happens here is that uh, in the in context of uh, healthcare uh, there's this work by lu and uh, karwana uh, that explore the uh, entire spectrum of uh, uh, from linear model to a fully complex uh, model such as a random forest or a neural network um, and what they say is that uh, one can see that it is uh, the accuracy of these models increase as you move towards a fully complex model but the in and uh, intelligibility is uh, uh, kind of the word they use for interpretability uh, is what keeps decreasing and what they have proposed is a variant of uh, uh, generalized linear model called generalized additive model and uh, it's kind of something which is at a very sweet spot uh, it's uh, interpretable and uh, doesn't lose too much in terms of accuracy compared to say a random forest is what they show in their um, uh, paper so to understand uh, what a, a generalized additive model is essentially what's happening is that at each individual feature you are allowed to do a non-linear transformation and though that is what these functions f1 f2 and fn are uh, so individual features you may do a non-linear transformation uh, which can be learned and uh, but the final prediction is a linear combination of these non-linear transformations over individual features and finally if the if there's a link function associated then it becomes a generalized additive model so with this uh, we end the uh, notion of uh, building interpretable models um, in uh, by design uh, and what we did was like a sample of some of the popular techniques that have been proposed this is an active area of research and many many techniques are being uh, uh, proposed and published as we speak thanks for joining